Hard-working Bathurst trainer Wendy Turnbull has achieved more than she could have dreamed when she first became involved in the sport of harness racing. Wendy married Greg Turnbull, the son of legendary horseman A.D. Turnbull, and together they had two children, Emma and Jason. However, tragedy struck the Turnbull family when Greg was diagnosed with cancer and passed away. For the sake of the children, Wendy continued to train horses and is understandably proud of what the family has accomplished. Let's go inside her stable. What about the, the setup here? Tell us a little bit about how big it is and, and what you've got. Um, we've got a barn with 20 stables and then we have some, even if we have vacancies inside, that we work out of the paddock because we find they go better out of the paddock. Um, so we built this, Greg and I built this in 89. Yeah, and um, we've just recently, 12 months ago, put in a walking machine. We've got our own track and jog track. Um, that we work on independently. So we bought that land here hmm, probably about seven or eight years ago. We used to rent it before, so now we own that independently too. So that's um, basically it. The Emma and Jason have bought a farm just up the road where we adjust our own horses now. What about the the, uh, the walking machine? Has that been a, a good uh, a good pickup for the for the stable? It has. It's it's been interesting to watch it um, evolve. Like some horses really thrive on it. That truly mysterious. Um, she's an older mare and was always really sour and cranky. And um, since we've had her on it, her whole demeanour's changed. Um, and we had one week we didn't put her on, and she started kicking that again. So you know, it's got to be that. And unfortunately, it's a bit trial and error. Um, see how much they do take. We've had to increase their feed to go with it. So there's been a bit of play time with it. And the only trouble is it's probably more time so that it takes out of your day, which is, pushes everybody a bit more. <laughs> 430 winners you've had as a trainer. Oh, awesome. OK. Um, if, you, if things had worked out, the horses would have been in Greg's name. And, and of course, when he passed away, that things had to change. That must have been unbelievably hard time for you and the kids was was there a time where you thought no nah, don't want to do horses anymore which day <laughs> <laughs> every second day um yeah no it's basically not i told emma and jason i'd give it five years and that was for them to grow up <laughs> and to go to uni and or get a career in something else so that they could make an informed decision whether they want to do it rather than just think they had to do it to continue it. So that's how it, you know, that's how I took it over or stayed in it, I suppose. Um, and yeah, that's 16 years ago nearly now and I'm still here, so I'm <laughs> not quite sure when that's going to stop, but anyway. <laughs> Were you born into horses? like Ponies. Ponies? Yeah, ponies, but not trotters at all. So yeah, no. so, so it was a... Oh. Married into it. <laughs> <laughs> Learning curve? Um, yeah, well, I suppose, you know, because you were used to horses, it just evolved a bit um, then because I was nursing, so it um, you got into it slowly. And then when we built here, it was a matter of financial that, you know, you had to do it too. And um, that's how it started. And I was only ever going to do stables and jog, and then I ended up doing track work and young ones and that as well. So, you know, probably more than, than people realised at the time, which is probably why I survived. But, um, yeah, I suppose I was lucky. Lucky or unlucky. Depends which way you look at it. Was there a moment that you thought, no, we're doing the right thing? We've, I've made the right decision. The kids are making a success of it. We're, we're training winners. We're having a good run. I'm, I've done the right thing. Was there a moment, one moment in time you say, yeah, it's happening? Um, I don't really think so, but I don't really think that there's really a time other than a really, you know, depressive day and a horse goes really bad that you think, why am I doing this? Um, and I think it's more you enjoy life when things are going well. And, and obviously, if you're getting winners, that takes a bit of the stress off you and it gives you a reward for what you're doing. And as, you know, Emma said, it doesn't matter where the winner is or what it is, um, it can sometimes be a horse that you've had difficulty with and it's a reward just to win a, you know, a basic maiden race, um, then the horse might not win another one, but it's a reward justifying what you've done. So I suppose in what you're asking is, is each day when I see Emma and Jason not fighting and happy, that's, <laughs> that's saying I've done the right thing. <laughs> you must be super proud of the kids though. I am, yeah, no, they've done a good job. Um, is there a favourite horse that you've had here <laughs> in the years that you've gone, yep, yeah, he's my favourite or she's my favourite? It's a common question I get asked and um, and people, 
expect me to say GD's boy, probably. And, and yes, he was a favourite. Um, but there was a horse, National Cruise, which I've also stated in the past, that was the first one w was given to us to break in um, because we were left sort of with none because people didn't realise we could still do it. So that horse, she went on to be a C6. So, you know, she tipped me out, breaking her in, and she kept going backwards on the track. She did all sorts of horrid things. But it was more she was special because the people had faith in us to do it. So to get a new horse, not just your old ones, back at that particular time made her special. But Judy's boy, obviously, um, he was the last one Greg broke in and um, always had ability but had issues. And the day we got the news about Greg, I worked him. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've still got the times written down <laughs> that he ran, so yeah. He was, uh, he was obviously a, a very special horse for the family. What about, um, is there favourite moments for you watching the kids in the sport? Is like when, when Emma was driving in a, in a race like the Miracle Mile, didn't have much luck in the race after, <laughs> after what happened at the start, but is, is there a, like, how proud were you watching Emma drive in a, in a Miracle Mile? Um, I think I was more nervous than proud <laughs> um, because I think that maternal instinct kicks in and it's that protective, you know, you're always worried about them, how they're going to go. So I'm... I'm just as proud of them probably, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with how they conduct themselves, um, how they speak to people, you know, that I'm probably prouder of than actually a race because I think at the end of the day it's more important. 33-year-old Jason Turnbull has driven more than 320 winners in his career, but with the famous Turnbull blood flowing through his veins, there was never any doubt at which way his career would head despite obtaining a tertiary degree. I went to university and did a teaching degree, um, but in the back of my mind I was always going to give harness racing a go, um, but I've got the teaching there now so if I want to um, some stage down the track move back to it, um, it's there. So. You're okay. happy with that decision? You, 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 you like the, the balance that you've got and the, and the decision you made? Yeah, yeah. Um, some days are better than others obviously. I suppose you get that in any job. but. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy doing horses at the moment, and um, yeah, we're not we're chugging along all right here at the moment, so things aren't too bad. So yeah, let's go back to the the start of your winning career, uh, Cancun Saloon. Kicked it all off for you. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, he won. Um, Dad was putting me on all these horses, and they were all really well graded, and I was getting them all beat. Um, Cancun Saloon started it all. He won at Penrith one night. And Dad said, now all you have to do is just get around to the deaf. He'll win from the deaf, just get there. So we did that and he won and won easy. And um, yeah, that was the first winner and a very memorable one. What was, um, you know, like you, you said, you got a, a couple beat. Was was there a feeling there that you, you weren't you weren't meant for this? You weren't, you weren't, a, bit, you weren't a natural? I didn't realise that I was getting a beat to start <laughs> with, to be honest. It's just, um, that's what everybody else has told me since. But... Um, yeah, no, there was no sort of ill feeling or anything like that when I started off. You know, I, I was learning like everybody else does at the same time. So, what about um, after Cancun Saloon? You had a little bit of luck with um, Hi Ho Caesar. Yeah, Hi Ho Caesar was a very nice horse. He came along at a very good time for us. Um, he came along just after Dad passed. So, um, you know, he was he was a really nice little horse. He made the size final as a two year old, and I think he made as a three year old as well. Um, he he won. I think he had seven or eight starts, and he won five of them as a two-year-old, um, four or five. Yeah, he was a really nice little juvenile, and he turned out to be not a bad old horse too. He won he won an MO and an M1 at Harold Park, and then he actually ended up he had a soft palate, so they retired him uh, not long after that. You mentioned the passing of your dad. Obviously, the the toughest time in in your life. Um, were, was there times when your sister, your mum? You didn't want to have anything to do with the horses? No, I don't think so. Um, not not on my part, you know. Um, it sort of, it was just, you know, one of them unfortunate things that happened in life, you know. Um, obviously, it was a big turning point in all our lives, I'd, I'd say. Um, but no, I, there wasn't there wasn't a moment where I didn't want to do do what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, you won a couple on Rusty Mahoney? Yeah, Rusty. Um, Dave Wilkins got me to drive him. Um, he said he thought he'd struggle from here on in, so he used my junior claim. And um, 
after I got off him, he just went from strength to strength. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether I got him to, you know, perform better or whether me getting off him made him perform better. But um, he ended up. I think he made a he made a miracle mile or something. Or a Cordona sprint he might have made. He missed out on the miracle mile, but um, yeah, he was a lovely old horse. What about the the travelling when you had your claim from from the lagoon to to Sydney? Did that did that get um, a tough trip to make? Uh, not so much back then. These days it is. Um, you know, it's harder for me. I guess I'm getting older or something. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 obviously hard. You know, when you've got to travel and and the thing was, you know, we were doing Penrith Thursday, Harold Park Friday. You know, come Saturday you're just about buggered. But um, no, it's just one of those things that you have to do, I guess. What about Concord? He's a pretty special horse for you. Yeah, he was a lovely old horse. He um he won two or three at Harold Park as well. He was. Um, he was just a good bread and butter horse. He made the size final as a three-year-old. Um, we bought him off Wayne and Ian Lamb. Uh, some clients of ours did, um, and yeah, he did. A, he did a really good job. Emma Turnbull is 35 years old and is approaching 600 career winners as a driver. And explained that when a horse first arrives at the Turnbull stable, a decision is made by the siblings on who will do the race driving. When a horse comes to the stable, um, me and Jason decide who gets who, and we usually stick with that horse the whole way through. We talked to Jason about what he wanted to do when, when he was growing up and, and he said it was always horses and he, the teaching on the side. is What about you when you were growing up? Is, is there something that you wanted to do or was you always going to go into the horses? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, sort of just go with the flow and sort of with the horses and kept going and had a bit of success early and that sort of just followed on from there. Your first winner, Kel Chip, back on March the 20th, 1996. It's, uh, it's a long time ago now. Um, can you remember that moment? I can, yep. I um, sat on the leader and um, he had good gate speed and come out and took a seat and sat on the leader and down the straight I pretty much didn't even have to push out and got the cash, yeah. Kel Chip, a good horse for you. I think you won, won a couple more. Yeah. yeah, the owner, he was great. He was fantastic to me when I got my licence. I was just allowed to drive him all the time. And, um, yeah, I just, you know, we went through the grades, won a few races. And, yeah, he was a really good horse to drive and learn on. 4,693 drives for 582 wins and 1,086 placings. But in that time, you've been associated with some some pretty nice horses haven't you you've, you've been fortunate there yeah I have you know I've you know driven in a couple of group ones and had some as you said nice horses that went through their grade and yeah I've been very lucky take us through the association with Blue Gum Forest because uh, it got into a miracle mile in 2004 yeah um Steve and Liz Conroy I did a bit of driving for them and um had a lot of success with them and a few of their horses so I was lucky there Blue Gum Forest nice horse yeah very nice horse yep he was he um he didn't quite crack a big one but he ran um, many places in good races. Placed in a chariot of fire as well? Yeah I think he was third in the chariots, um, yeah got a run in the Miracle Mile, yeah he, he was a really nice horse. What about um, left right out, drove, a, drove it on a couple of occasions? Yeah no he was he was a lovely horse and um, we had a really good purple patch with him and um, around Harold Park um, mm. he was a great horse and um, yeah really kicked me off when I sort of started at Metro and yeah, got plenty of winners with him. And what about the travelling to and from? I said the same to Jason. The the, the travelling from here at the Lagoon all the way to Sydney to, to use that claim um, at Harold Park. Did did that get tiresome? Was it was it tough to make that trip week in and week out? Oh yes and no. But you got used to it. Um, you know, there was probably three, four, maybe five years that I raced every Friday at Harold Park. But um, I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, it was good, and you got in a routine, and it worked out not too bad. What about Gems and Roses, mare that you had a bit of uh, success with? Yeah, she was in the Ladyship Mile. Um, she was a nice mare and, um, yeah, she went a long way. Our Trilogy, a horse, uh, another one that you had some, some success on? Yeah, um, she she won quite a few and, yeah, she was a nice mare too. And and 12 Paces, a horse that had a couple of big clashes with that Lombo Pocket Watch early in their career. Yeah, he, um, he was... He was he was a nice horse and he went he went really well and went a long way and um, yeah pocket watch probably beat us on a few bigger the races but um, no he was a really nice horse. What what do you think of the new track at Bathurst? Yeah I like it. Um, it is it's good. Um, it makes it easier for the better horses to go to Menangle and compete. Um, makes it a bit harder for the slower ones. They sort of have to go out west now, but track's good and um, good atmosphere there.